that robber has um, exercised illegitimate power, and that is the reason why if he's arrested, he can be sent to jail for life maybe, depending on the gravity of his, uh, his activity in your house. Now, police public relations have been uh, studied all over the world. And because they are so much visible in the urban communities, the kind of relationship between the police and the public is not exactly very friendly. It's been characterized as uh, hostile. But studies carried out in America, in Canada, in Britain, and other parts of the world, they suggest that the majority of the people interviewed feel that the police are doing a good job, except that there are certain areas of their activities which are regarded as uh, not very good enough. For example, their lack of honesty, and that is a sense in which uh, we can talk about the corruption of the police, uh, their lack of efficiency, and, and this can be explained by their lack of uh, logistic support. For example, the numerical strength is not good enough and they don't have the logistic support to become efficient. And the, their brutality has also been condemned as well as uh, their lack of courtesy. Now, the major reason explaining the hostility between the the, the police and the public in the urban communities can be explained by a number of factors. The lack of awareness of what constitutes crime, the lack of information to the police, and the lack of recording of complaints made to the police. Now, lack of an awareness simply means that a lot of people in the urban communities are not well educated enough, or sometimes you may be well educated but still you may not know what the law says. It is only through education and good education that people in the urban communities can be made aware of what the law says. So you see a crime being committed in front of you. You witness the crime, but you do not recognize that crime as a crime. So you don't report it. So this is very frustrating. The police don't sometimes understand that people who may have witnessed a crime do not recognize that particular activity as criminal. So that's the reason why they don't come to report those uh, activities. Lack of an awareness of what constitutes crime. Lack of information is another problem that frustrates the police. The, the police want to rely on the public for information to enable them to do a great job in terms of crime control and in terms of planning in um, what is to be done to keep the community safe. But the public sometimes, they're aware of a crime, they know it's criminal, yet they deliberately keep the information from the police. It could be that the person involved in the crime is a close relation, a kinsman, so therefore, according to the traditional culture, you must be a brother's keeper, so you don't want to report your brother to the police. So that crime does not get reported. It may be an emotionally flavored crime, for example, rape or abortion or domestic violence, which a lot of people want to keep very quiet about because it involves stigmatization. The reason why rapes, according to the statistics, just about 36% of all rapes are reported throughout the world. What happens to the 64, the rest of the 64%? is swept under the carpet because people do not want to be stigmatized as a result of reporting these crimes because it involves their public image. So they keep quiet about it. And that's a part of the reason why a lot of the information or criminal information or, or information concerning criminal activities are not reported to the police because some of these are emotionally flavored. But the police may have the information and they may not record it for a number of reasons. Maybe they think that this is a minor crime, it is not worth wasting time on, or that the, uh, the witness who came to make the report is not credible enough, 
or that they indeed may have taken a bribe from the, uh, the, the perpetrators of the crime who do not want to go to court. So they have the report, but they bribe the policemen not to put, not to lock that particular activity to be prosecuted in court. So some of these explain the, the dark figure, the so-called dark figure in crime statistics, which uh, you should read the detailed information about. Now, the second institution in the basic structure is a religious institution. The religious institution basically has a function of regulating the relationship between us and the supernatural. How do you relate to God as an individual? That is why we go to church, that is why we go to the mosque, and that is why we go as, as, as Buddhists to chant, 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 because you want a certain level of relationship between you and the supernatural. That is the broad function of religion. A number of definitions, and you probably notice that most of the time, the basic concepts that we're discussing, we define them. That is how critical definitions are in the social sciences. If you do not define concepts, you cannot discuss them. Because the problem is, what are you discussing if you haven't defined it? So definitionally, religion is, according to Nukunya, beliefs and practices associated with the supernatural. Very simple definition, which you can keep in mind. According to Durkheim, religion refers to a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. That is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all those who adhere to them. I did not put that down there. Now, the origins of religion basically is a search for security, a search for the causal explanation of ill and misfortune and how to prevent this. If you look critically at all the religions that you may be involved in, it has to do with security. How secure are you if you're afraid of certain things? How, how can you make yourself secure? Now, urban areas are full of religions. I live in an area uh, which is comparable to the size of Lagon in terms of the space occupied by that area. And there are more than 15 churches in a small area alone. Why is there such a concentration of people in churches, in mosques, and other religious organizations in the urban communities, a number of factors can be used to explain the proliferation, particularly of charismatic Pentecostal churches in the urban communities. First is social aspiration, the search for long life, social mobility, social stratification, economic prosperity, and higher education. Now, social aspiration refers to the search for the good things of life, uh, the cultural goals, the things worth striving for, like higher education, getting married, and many other things that people normally aspire after. Now, the reason why people will go to church because of social aspiration is that God himself has promised uh, in the scriptures, if you check Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses, uh, chapter 9, I beg your pardon, verses 10 to 11, God says there that he is the one who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater and is able to make you so rich so that you can afford to be generous on every occasion. It means that if you're looking for something good, God is the one you should be looking up to. This partially explains why there are so many people in the churches. Remember that migrants in the urban area came for prosperity. 
they left the poverty of the rural areas and came to the urban areas for greener pastures. They want to be able to achieve some of their goals. So if the church, if there's God in church who can enable you through all kinds of breakthroughs to be able to achieve those goals, that explains the reason why you'll be looking for God in churches. And explain the reason why there are so many churches in the urban communities. The search for long life. Who can prolong your life except God? In the urban areas, people are working so hard to achieve this or that goal. They manage to build a beautiful house. They manage to acquire a beautiful car and many beautiful gadgets in their home. They want to be able to live long enough to be able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. And it's only God who can do that. In the scriptures, we have heard about a certain king, I think it's King Hezekiah, who was about to die. And he prayed fervently to God to extend his life. And God had his prayer and was able to give him 15 more years. So long life, if you're looking for it, then God is your best bet. That is the part of the reason why people go to church, because they're working so hard in the urban communities to achieve goals. And when you achieve these goals, you want to live long enough to be able to uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Part of the fear that people have in terms of achieving these goals is that there are evil competitors in the urban community, like uh, those who can use witchcraft or sorcery or other evil magic to try and cut you short. But if you find yourself worshiping and you have the protection of God and you are born again and you are we have the Jesus power, then there is nothing that you believe can prevail against you because the name of Jesus is above every other name at the mention of which every knee shall bow. So partially that is the reason why there is such a proliferation of people of, of churches in the urban areas and people are getting to these churches for these reasons, social aspiration is such for long life. And social mobility is the ability to move within the social structure from a, high, uh, from a lower status to a higher status. And promotion comes not from the East, not the West, but from God. And part of this punishment, again, in the scriptures is what I quoted much earlier, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 10 to 11. It's only God who is able to make you socially mobile through the breakthroughs that he's able to, 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 to manifest in your life. But if you're in his good books, basically that is why. So people go to church conscious of the fact that it's only God who can make them socially mobile. Social mobility is associated with social prestige you have respectability in the urban community and that's why people are working so hard to become respectable in the community. Social stratification has to do with uh, promotions in the workplace. And of course, if you are in the workplace and you are looking forward to being promoted, you want to be in the good books of God, you're going to be praying and fasting. If you're going to go to an interview, anyone got to cause you to, to find favor with those who are interviewing you. All of this is plain why a cross-section of people in the urban communities are to be found in the churches. Economic prosperity explains why the churches are dominated by lawyers, by uh, lecturers, by uh, carpenters, masons, plumbers, all kinds of people who do one type of work or the other. They all want to become economically uh, prosperous. Again, if you look at the scriptures, it's only God who can make you prosperous so that you can afford to be generous on every occasion. And higher education, I have often observed that uh, on the Legon campus,